So I didn't have a good first experience with my first shop. Um, didn't really fit in very well. Um, I, I was told that I need to cut the motivational stuff out. I used stuff, but that wasn't the word given to me. Um, and I also did my CDCs in about four months. Um, and when I was doing them, the only thing told to me was, you know, you don't have to do them this fast. So uh, there was really not a lot of positive reinforcement anywhere I turned. Kind of looking back at it, I, I do know that everybody was probably just stressed. Uh, the staff sergeants were overworked uh, like they normally are in probably most career fields. Um, EPRs over, they had 15 airmen a piece, 20 airmen, everybody, a lot of people in CDCs. There was a lot going on. So uh, I'm definitely understanding uh, some of the reasons why. All I can tell you is it wasn't a very positive, like reinforced uh, feeling that I got. Did you ever um, get to a point where like you just wanted to like walk away from the whole thing? I just feel like being new, like it'd be hard to bounce back from that. You know what I mean? Because you, you'd feel like so alone at that point. Yeah. You're in a different state. You're in the middle of nowhere. You don't know anyone. Like how the heck did you bounce back from that? So kind of, I talked to my mom a lot. I would call her um, and we would talk and she's always been really good. And uh, specifically like her as a person, she's really good with kind of like a counseling type of talk. Like she listens very well and asks good questions and, um, you know, she's always, I always knew, like, I can tell when she's being a mom and I can tell when she's actually giving really good advice. Um, and she gives really good advice a lot. So I do like thoroughly enjoy talking to her and bouncing stuff off of her. Probably the biggest reason why I, I think I recovered is I do a lot of self-reflecting. Um, pretty much self-reflected every single day. Uh, Cause after kind of not fitting in for so long and, and I looked at it like, man, I'm not, I'm not out here hurting anybody. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to get in anybody's face. I'm not telling anybody who I think they are, what I think they're not. I'm not calling anybody names. I'm not getting in fights with anybody. Like, why am I so unliked, you know? Um, so I started like truly asking myself, like, is it something I'm doing? Like, is, is this my doing? Am I doing something to make these people feel this way? Um, and I would just talk to my mom about it uh, and, and try and reflect on some things. And, you know, she said something that really, that I'll probably always remember because I was trying to find who I was. Um, I'm like, I don't know who I am. I thought I was this great leader. I thought I was super funny. I thought I was super likable. Um, you know, I thought I was great at sports, uh, really strong. Like all these things were reinforced in my relative uh, life you know my, the confinements of like where I lived my high school my friends x y and z and then you, you join the air force you join the military branch and now there's people from all over the world um so things you self-identify with get challenged and that got challenged really fast for me uh, I found out that I wasn't a great leader I found out that I did well at Best Buy with the team I had that was the reality the reality isn't I'm a great leader uh, the reality was I did well there. Um, that was extremely hard to come to terms with. Um, I think I'm pretty funny, but I think, I mean, I think I have a sense of humor. You weren't, you weren't nailing it there though, were you? <laughs> no. Um, and I realized it's, it's about, I, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder about everybody. Like I, I assumed a lot of other people. I had a preconceived notion of their thoughts and, and kind of their attitude. So you started um, painting this picture yeah. and kind of creating this world of, I mean, you were in a negative environment. Um, I think for any new airman that that is stressful, but then it gets so much worse when you start making assumptions, assuming yeah. every, every whispers about you, assuming that you're so isolated and that might not be the reality, but it's the it's the picture you start to paint in that it's, situation. Yeah. You, obviously we're like our brains are really powerful so things we convince ourselves will will make them true like we'll we'll make up the scenarios if we have to and if and if they give us any bit to lead in that direction you know our brains will conclude that that's that's it you know they are out to get me they don't like me they are 
lazy. They'll never be X, Y, and Z, or, you know, we're two different, you know, we're cut from two different fabrics or, or whatever you're going to, you're going to tell yourself. Um, but, but yeah, no, I got really, I got really depressed, um, really depressed. And it was very hard. Um, so yeah, I did all this self-reflecting and stuff and I got to the point where it's kind of hard to fight anymore with, with everybody. Um, and that's kind of where I was, I was like, man, if I need to change, like I'm willing to change, you know, cause this is, this is hard to deal with every day. Like not being liked every single day and trying to stand up for what you believe in and nobody else at least reinforces your opinion is very hard. Um, very hard. So I started realizing who I wasn't, which I've been kind of hinting on, which I think is something, if not more important than finding out who you are. Um, because through the journey of finding out who you are, you're going to find out who you're not and you need to know who you're not. Um, so I came to terms, like I'm not the most athletic person, you know, I used to be, but I'm not now. Uh, I'm not the funniest person. Uh, I'm not the best leader. Um, I'm not the most liked person, the most popular person, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I knew that I could add value in people's lives while not being any of those things. I could be just who I am. And I bet that I could probably add values to people's lives. Cause I would go to the, the, the DFAC when I was in the dorms and I'd be so sad, mad for whatever reason, right? I'd got my hoodie on hands in my pocket look down go to the defect do whatever and i thought to myself like how selfish is that to be so harped up on how bad you got it that there's somebody else that's going through something being away from their their home anxiety uh fear maybe the same thing i'm going through but i'd rather have a pity party than to keep my eyes up say hi to somebody when they're walking and ask how their day went I just, I kind of re, I recentered my focus away from me. Um, so I made it kind of like a motto of mine or like a challenge of mine um, that I was going to try to live more for other people than to worry about what's going wrong and what, how people don't like me. You know, I wasn't going to worry about that. I was going to worry more on just being some, somebody, somebody can look at and maybe be happy for 10 seconds out of the day more than they were. Um, so I did that for probably four to five months when I was in the dorms. Um, and it became second nature. People started talking more to me. Um, people were like genuinely happy to be around me. Uh, I made some friends in my work center. Um, things kind of turned around a little more. Um, and I truly did kind of have more of a purpose at that point. Um, I kind of knew a little bit more who I was. And even if there was some bad things going on, I knew that it would get better. And like, there's still people that need me. So, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of time to just worry about my own, you know, first world problems. You know, I love that you came to that conclusion so early in your career, because like, when people are afraid like that, the last thing they're thinking about is other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? When people are afraid like that, they kind of go into a survival mode and they'll either join the crowd that they originally didn't agree with, you know, join the good old boys and, and kind of, even though they don't want to, but it's their way of surviving. Right. Or, or they just check out and they never check back in. Um, and so I just, I really admire that so young in your life and in your career, it clicked for you to help other people, to be there for others. And, and the energy that you're putting out there, you definitely start to get back. It might take some time, yeah. but you, you start to make that connection. Like, okay, I'm putting negative vibes out there. I'm going to get negative vibes back. But if I, exactly. if I start caring about people and just worrying about their well-being, somehow in turn, things start to turn around for you although you're not focusing on yourself 24 seven. So it's, that's a conclusion. Hell, I don't think I made for a hot, I don't even know. It was, it was a hot minute. Um, right. If I'm being honest with you. And so, yeah, I think that's so impressive, man. I think that's such an awesome lesson that you learned that, that early on. Is that something that you still carry with you? It's a, 
it's a conclusion that I came to.